welcome. Uh, my name is Maureen McNerney. I'm the Director of Development at Women's Public Leadership Network, WPLN, a national nonprofit dedicated towards uh, preparing women on center and right-leaning women to seek public office at all levels across the country. This Mother's Day, we are celebrating by highlighting some outstanding moms on the trail. And I'm so uh, grateful to be joined today by Nicole Chavez. Nicole is a mother of three. Um, unfortunately, her oldest son, Jaden, was tragically killed in 2015, which motivated her to fight for state level reforms in New Mexico. Uh, she created a nonprofit organization to bring together families uh, victimized by crime. And now she's running to represent House District 28 in the New Mexico legislature. So we're going to talk through sort of your decision to run, um, but we're so grateful for you being here with us, Nicole. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about your decision to run. What motivated you? What did you hope to accomplish once you were in office? What motivated me to run was, like you said, my son was tragically taken um, by a drive-by shooting. He was at the wrong place at the wrong time in June 26th of 2015. And so ever since then, I have been lobbying in Santa Fe at the state capitol every legislative session, trying to bring stronger crime bills and trying to give more support to homicide victims. We have a huge issue with repeat offenders and violent crime. Um, the crime has gotten out of control. Um, we have a huge issue right now with uh, pretrial release. And so it's gotten worse and worse in this last session. It just felt like I was climbing up a mountain. And instead of going forward, they were actually trying to bring some bills that would lower penalties for repeat offenders for violent criminals. And I said, you know what, enough is enough. Um, my kids are getting older and I'm going to fight for the victims myself um, and, and, stri and try to um, fight for stronger crime bills. That's great. Yeah, we find that so many women are running on issues that are so personal and so important to them. So I'm sure that what you're saying is resonating with so many folks, um, even across different policy areas, too. Um, so what what were some of the conversations like with your family as you were making this decision to step from your personal life into public life and actually run for office? So it's actually funny you ask that. Um, people have been telling me that I should run for office for a few years now, but you know, you feel like you're so busy at work. I have a full-time job and then you have a full-time job when you're home with your kids, um, including sports activities after school. So you just feel like you never have enough time. And I thought, well, I'm already advocating for victims. I started a nonprofit for victims of homicide and we stayed very busy with that. Um, and so I thought there's just not enough time in the day. Um, I would be exhausted. There would be no way I could do this. Um, so they actually encouraged me and said, you know what, mom, you should run. You've heard it enough times. My daughter now, um, she's a senior in college. She's 22 years old. She's graduating this year. And she said, I have watched you fight and fight, mom. And it's time. You can do this yourself. You're strong. You're a strong woman. You're a strong mother. And I think that you can do it, we can help you. And so, you know, I decided, you know what, I think you're right. I always tell you to push harder, right, and go further. Um, I think it's time for me to be an example to my kids. Oh, well, what a great testament just to your family and, and everything you've taught them. And congratulations to her graduating college. Um, but that they wanted to see you do this and step up into this role. Um, so are they participating in any aspects of your campaign? Um, absolutely. So they are going to all of my forums. They are going door knocking with me. Um, my daughter actually went with me to get my petition signed. So she did door knocking along with me. Um, she felt that it was important to let people know this is my mom and she is fighting for me. She's fighting for my older brother and my younger brother as well and trying to make a change here. Because what I really told them is I want you guys to graduate college and stay in New Mexico. Uh, you know, so many children are leaving because we don't have jobs anymore. Um, business owners are leaving the state because of our gross receipts tax and because crime is out of control. And of course, COVID didn't help with that. 
So I'm seeing all of my daughter Kennedy's kids now or friends now say that they're leaving after they graduate. And I didn't want my daughter to be one of them. Yeah, absolutely. It's such a, a great intersection of just, again, why the politics is so personal to you and, and really what you are running on. Um, so have there been any difficult situations um, that you've had to overcome in terms of that striking that balance? And this can even be before your run in your capacity as you were advocating um, you know, in the legislature. You mentioned sports, for example. I think that's a common one that a lot of moms want to be there for everything and can't always. Um, but do you have an example of a time where it was sort of difficult to balance these two aspects of your life? Absolutely. And as mothers, I'm sure we feel that way all the time as working mothers, because we want to be at every practice as well as every game and make sure that, you know, they're ready for practice. They have their cleats in their bag. They have their snacks. They have their water. Right. We think that we're the only ones that can do it. Um, and most of the time we are. But um, it was really important for me to be there, especially as they were growing up. I was always the team mom. I was the chair coach. Um, I was the PTA president as well at their middle school while holding a full-time job. So um, it was hard for me when I started advocating at first because I have to be in Santa Fe. Um, and then sometimes I would have to, you know, miss a practice or miss a game when uh, a committee was in longer than they were supposed to be because we don't have timing on when a bill goes up. Um, when you have to testify on it, there's no schedule. And when there is a schedule, it totally, you know, they don't follow it. Um, so we could be there for eight hours in a room before we testify on a bill. And when bills are really important and they're really going to change laws, you have to stay. So that was a struggle for me to learn that there's a balance. But I think that the kids are very understanding and knowing, you know, my mom is doing something really important. I know she has to be in Santa Fe during these time periods, but it's so that we could have a better future and a better life here in New Mexico. Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, just such a great attitude that, that is being brought into this process um, that everyone can sort of benefit from. Um, what advice would you give to somebody that's maybe just starting out or considering it? Um, or what do you wish that you had been told that you've sort of learned the hard way out there? Um, I think I was thrown in um, because of what happened to my son, I started advocating in Santa Fe six months after it happened. So I really had no idea what I was in for. Um, but I would really encourage somebody that is passionate about making changes, is passionate about running for office, um, don't wait. You know, I, I should have maybe done this six years ago when I started. Um, it's really important because as a volunteer advocate, um, my strength is limited as far as actually passing bills or getting a bill um, endorsed by a legislator. And I could be that person myself. I can introduce bills. I can write bills. I can create amendments. Um, and so I really thought that it was important to do that myself. So I would always say, talk to your family first. Mm -hmm. um, if they understand those key issues, um, you're already, I think, an amazing woman, an amazing mother, if you want to put yourself forward and put yourself out there on behalf of your community and your state. So I have no doubt that anybody that wants to run for office that is, you know, a working mom or a mom at home um, has that strength within them to just do it. And so I would say, stop making excuses, talk to your family and just, just get out there and run for office and see what you can do. Absolutely. Yes, we hope that everybody watching is is fired up. I know I am right now um, hearing you talk about your journey and just just hearing that that you can do it. Right. Um, and so my last question is just uh, how are you going to be celebrating Mother's Day this year? Do you have any plans, anything you're looking forward to hopefully stepping off the trail for at least a second to relax? Definitely stepping off the trail. Of course, we'll start the day with going to church. Um, and then my daughter tries to do something really exciting and a surprise. Last year, she created this picnic in the backyard with blankets, chocolates, flowers, and my favorite wine, and then put just scattered pictures all over the tables and countertops of me with the children and the kids. Um, and of course, we never end the day um, 
And it's always very bittersweet because to me, Mother's Day, it's heartbreaking at the same time. Um, we never end that day without going to the cemetery um, and spending time with Jaden. Uh, usually we'll take lunch or, or something for dinner or a snack and just, just sit down and visit with him and take him some fresh flowers. So um, that'll probably be either the beginning or ending of my celebration, but I, I like to include all of the children. And um, for those mothers that have lost your children, and are fighting, whether you're fighting and advocating for crime victims, advocating for the loss of your loved one, um, or advocating and fighting for um, a spot in office. Um, I just wanna tell you, uh, happy Mother's Day to you as well and never stop fighting. Um, I will always carry that passion because I wake up each and every day without my son and he's the reason that I'm doing what I'm doing today. Well, thank you so, so much, Nicole, for sharing, you know, just beautiful testimony um, about every aspect of, of what you're going through and what you've been through and where you're taking that and channeling that into service of others. So um, we so, so appreciate your time um, and I can't wait for folks to see this. So um, check out the rest of our Mother's Day series um, through Women's Public Leadership .net, um, and we will hopefully see you at a future program. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me and happy Mother's Day to everybody out there.